All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Georgia by Angie McDonald. Coach Angie, how are you doing? I'm good, John. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, so Angie's a professional speaker, empowerment strategist, and storyteller, a certified coach, NLP practitioner, and grief counselor. And what we're going to talk today about is resilience for the busy professional. And I love this topic, Angie, to be honest, because I think, especially the pandemic and everything, I think this has really, uh, really emphasized how important resilience is and how we and how resilience can not just help you overcome the circumstance, but resilience can actually help you to become more creative and more successful going forward as well. Absolutely. Resilience to me is just a, an authentic sense of innovation, um, you know, and ways to learn how to pivot, especially in a crisis or, you know, when there's a hard stop or a hard transition from one thing to the next, resilience definitely kicks in and makes it happen. And then um, for some people, can you just define what is the difference between because some people think resilience is just like hanging in there, right, you know, and, and just hanging on for dear life. But but resilience is a little bit more than that, right? Absolutely. Um, in my line of work as a grief coach, I couldn't be a grief coach unless I went through bouts of grief and went through it the hard way to learn what resilience really is and what it meant to me at the time. So to me, it's um, taking the notes from what life had to share with you in that, especially in those tough times. It's paying attention to the season that you're in, taking the notes from it, and how to uh, positively bounce back from that or counteract that situation or circumstance to either avoid it, minimize it, or to make it a lesson going forward. So tell me a little bit more about the concept of understanding what season you're in. Well, of course, as we visually and physically experience, seasons do change. Spring, summer, winter, fall. Um, and with that visual, I like to give folks the perception of experiencing that in our daily walk in life. When winter comes, things are you know, a little dry, no leaves on the trees, it's cold. Um, unless we enjoy that weather, for some it's not enjoyable. So that winter season of our lives, we know that it's not enjoyable. What used to look flourishing or you know, vibrant, it's kind of dimmed, our, whether it's our attitude, our finances, uh, resources, friendships, and you would take stock of that, notice it, um, see what may have caused that difference, that change, and um, use that time wisely, whether to introspect and grow or value those who are around you and reach out more often and just be, you know, use it as a growing and learning experience. Yeah, no, I like the analogy a lot because yeah, when people sometimes end up in end up in a maybe in a winter situation, the temptation is to make like a bear, isn't it? And just go to sleep and just ignore it and hope it'll all go away and wake up again in springtime. Um, yeah. But but that's not that's not really an option for most people. No, um, there is a proverb that I used to hear as a little girl um, uh, where it says, consider the ant thou sluggard. <laughs> how she gathers her things in the spring and summer, how she builds her fortress and uh, builds it with precision so that when fall and winter comes, she's stocked up. She knows what to do. She knows how to feed her family. So I've learned to consider the end and not be a sluggard and or slumber <laughs> in, the, in the winter months, uh, but rather make myself productive, make use of my time so that I'm not overcome by, you know, they said there's a sad syndrome that hits you during the winter months. I don't want to be overcome by that. So I'm going to be productive as possible. No, yeah, no, absolutely. So then how do you, how do you advise people to, <laughs> to uncover and discover their resilience and make it work for them? Because I always think sometimes it's funny when you talk to people, sometimes they don't, they don't realize how much evidence there is in their life that they are resilient, that they can overcome things. And sometimes it takes a, a a third party is probably why your your coaching is so successful yeah. to show to help you go back and say look at all the things that you've overcome in the past you have an amazing amount of resilience because people people often don't recognize it and yeah i raised my hand to that because i didn't recognize mine until 
um, someone popped my, you know, my petty parade balloon. Um, and that was in the form of my older sister who really saw me starting to get familiarized and too um, associated with grief and loss. So, I'm sorry, my daughter decided to buy me. Um, so, um, my sister found me um, in a position where I was getting familiarized with grief and loss. And she said, I see someone that I don't recognize. You are getting familiar with loss. You lost, yes, um, 12 years ago, I lost my first husband suddenly. And um, that came after that trickled the loss of our businesses, the loss of our home, other assets and resources. And I just sat there and I was starting to get comfortable with it. And that's not who I was. And she mm -hmm. saw that and really pricked me that day. She like poked at my, my little pity party. And I said, you know, got angry at first. But then I realized like, wow, this isn't me. This is not who I am. And that's when I came up with the theory of taking the notes of what life was telling me and overcoming that. Yeah, no, I love it. Thank you for sharing though, because I, I love that story because it's true even um it even doesn't even things as as catastrophic as catastrophic as you went through for us to become very comfortable in when things aren't working out for us or whatever and it's so it's and it's very easy then just to crack open a beer and sit there and go well life's not fair is it you know it's my this pandemic destroyed me or this thing this this that or the other happened it's a very easy it's as you said, I think when you said comfortable, it does, it can, can become very comfortable for us very quickly if we're not careful. Absolutely. And it was, it was my way of holding myself hostage in my, in my grief process, because I didn't want to come out of that bubble of being still, uh, still being married to the memory of my late husband. It was easier that way to me at that time. Um, I didn't want to fight through it. I didn't want to see what the other side of grief was, which was acceptance and growing from it and discovering myself or rediscovering myself. And from that, when um, my sister popped that bubble, I now, like I said, I took the notes. And when I founded uh, Wounded to Wonderful five years ago, my motto from that is heal, grow, discover. Mm, I like that. Heal, grow, and and discover. That, that yeah, so that became, you know, my, my catchphrase now, soon to be my trademark pending, um, of the, the steps that I needed to take of healing, then growth, growing from that, learning from that, taking the notes and saying, all right, I'm not going to be selfish with this amazing feeling. I have to make it a story. I have to make it my metaphor. And then from that, discover what else can I do? Who else can I serve? You know? No, absolutely. And uh, uh, the, the idea of loss, though, and, and, and grief, though, I think it's um, like it's very obvious to us when it's when it's, you know, losing somebody or somebody close to us or a loved one. We don't always recognize it when it comes to other parts of our life, like you said, like losing a business or losing. Some, we don't often associate that, that the same way with loss and grief, but it, it's just as powerful. It is. It is absolutely um, hand in hand and synonymous when you lose something that you've given life to, when you've seen something that you flourished and that the hands of your work made something viable for someone else to enjoy or benefit from. And to see that thing dwindle or I uh, wouldn't use the word fail, but transition uh, mm -hmm. so that you can resurrect that in a new idea or give it into something else. Um, yeah, it hurts. And there is a, a, a weaving, a, well, an unweaving process where you have to demesh yourself from that thing you've intertwined your whole mind, body, soul with. Could be a person, could be a thing, the business. But the process is I want people to be respectful of the process and use it as a resource for the next step, not to stop there. But what's the next best step can I make after this? And so what was uh, what were your first steps out of that like what are because because I think people always you know people will listen to this and other things and they'll say yeah this all makes sense and they but then they'll all then they'll focus on wow how do I get to z right uh -huh. instead of saying like yeah I want to get to z but I know that there's a bunch of steps in between so and I think that sometimes holds people back because they don't know how to take those first couple of baby steps True. And um, one thing I learned from Bob Proctor, um, he said something in one of his speeches blew my mind and I used to this day when I'm getting flustered. He said, focus on your why. Be so caught up, be so in love with your why that your how will find you. The resources, the people, the connection, the networks, 
become so driven by why and the things, the steps that you need to make to accomplish that why, everything associated with that why, which is essentially how, will, will, attra will attract itself to you. Um, so how do you get to the next step? Continue to hone in on your why. Push that button, push yourself as far as you can in that why. What wakes you up? What makes you passionate? What makes you lose sleep at night? That idea that keeps spinning in your head. And when you do that, the things attached to it that will bring it to fruition will attract itself to you. And you will undoubtedly see that it's something that's gonna get you to the next level. And that has helped me and has been a consistency for me to grow in my business by being passionate about serving those who are going through a hard loss. And then opportunities like this, sales pop, finds me. Hmm. <laughs> continue yes. to spread that message no absolutely and and i love that to think about the why because i do think if you if you just handpicked a random 10 people and said uh, you know what is your why even if it's just about your job you know what is your what is the why i guarantee you probably eight to nine of them wouldn't be able to answer you immediately because we don't spend enough time thinking about that and if anything hopefully maybe the pandemic gave us some time for reflection but, but I love that piece because I really do think a lot of people are going through the motions of their lives, doing what they think is expected of them without ever questioning what the why is. Absolutely. And I would encourage folks during this time, I believe it, this pandemic, yes, it was dreadful. It was hard. I've never worked as hard as my life as a grief coach um, during this time. But I believe uh, there is a silver lining behind the stark cloud of COVID-19 of a time of introspection. Um, a time of soul searching, being uh, finding time and enjoying one's own company. Uh, I lived in the Northeast, you know, mm -hmm. New Jersey, next to New York. I used to work for social enterprise in New York City, and the hustle and bustle was the way of life. If you didn't walk at a certain speed, you'd get pushed out the way or knocked over. Happened to me. Got pushed down a flight of subway stairs, oh, and I learned my lesson. You know, speed <laughs> it up, Angie. Um, <laughs> So I know those folks are in the buzz and in the humdrum of being busy and bustling. And I know that it drove a lot of folks up the wall to having to slow down and being alone with themselves. And that's where I had to put my services into overdrive to be that voice of reason and calm during these times for those busy individuals. So yes, use this time to really fall in the with yourself all over some things that may have not that may have not been you know conducive to your character and growth and i really hope you know that this respect of life and how beautiful yet how fragile it is during this time um, has given us a sense of drive to really live a full and complete life so when that life is over we can say that we gave it our all yeah yeah no that beautifully put um but I love the, again this idea of being, being alone with yourself because i think we live in a culture <laughs> where we're bombarded all the time with you know we've got devices and we're oh, yeah. constantly checking social media so we, it's almost like the pervasive culture around us and ourselves we do everything we can never to be alone with ourselves and i think, and yeah, I think that's a big and... that's, that's a big mistake <laughs> It can be, it's, it can be uh, deceiving on what life should really be and how fulfilling life can really be um, in the presence of one another. Like, especially with these no travel orders. I was supposed to be in a, several countries since last June. Um, I'm a little, I was a little cranky, little, you know, uh, not so happy about it because, you know, that wanting to be around, you know, just people and different yeah. sceneries and atmospheres can really help one center and focus or just being in the presence of loved ones. Like my, uh, I'm not home right now at my mom's house. And it was actually a last minute surprise from her baby sister to surprise her for the weekend for Mother's Day. And it's the first time I've seen my mom cry such full tears, uh, seeing her baby sister she hasn't seen in over a year. So that these are the things that we should see life for what it is, the beauty of interaction uh, and just being able to enjoy one another. Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping also, if you're looking for silver linings out of the pandemic, maybe people who who have been forced to be at home, I mean, especially maybe they have discovered that they got more time to interact with their children, it would interact with their significant other. Um, maybe that maybe this was a great opportunity to introduce some balance into life. And again, as you said earlier, the why, like remembering why did you do why did you start this 
relationship in the first place like why did you have kids in the first place and all of that it wasn't so that you could work 50 hours a, a day seven days a week exactly um so true and um um thankfully to say although i was widowed i'm remarried now five years and um this pand pandemic thank you my this pandemic caused my husband now and i to really look at each other and fall in love all over again and you know first few months were like oh my god get out of my face go downstairs <laughs> go somewhere else get out here you know but <laughs> now we've learned to just be in tandem with one another and just uh we've created a new norm and a new family dynamic where we are finding ways to enjoy each other within the home or within the yard and making the best of it and just being appreciative that we have one another still i still have you here to enjoy and i'm not looking at a photo or a memory mm -hmm. um yeah. so this was a really eye-opening and significant time for me as well as an individual yeah, and and somebody mentioned on another interview I did was, and, and I'll probably mess up the the concept, but uh, I think they called it ritual, small small rituals of intimacy, and and what they meant by that was during the pandemic, you know, that for the success of your relationship, you need to have things like whether it's you always go for a walk together on Thursday evening or something, you know, just small these, but things that are you and your and your significant other or whatever so that you connect in these small ways on on but they're ritualistic like so they happen all the time and they become embedded in your life true thing and that's a part of my new norm my husband and i we have made it uh i have to do whatever it takes drink how many cups of coffee i needed to drink <laughs> to stay up to watch a new movie with him because he said i know your slow days are thursday so wednesday night we're going to stay up late we're going to watch a new movie we're going to talk about stuff and i'm like okay and it was kind of you know a, a, a hassle but i had to pop some i uh, have some uh bob marley coffee oh. and that thing you know it helps helped me get me through the new movie and i was able to stay up and talk as promised and he said you did good netflix is not watching you now you're watching netflix look at that um so <laughs> that became ritualistic and i was intentional of being awake yeah. <laughs> and intentional uh, with that moment. So I do encourage anyone, of course, in our family dynamics to find that moment, find that rhythm that keeps you all clicking, especially with us being so much more around each other <laughs> on a daily basis. Yeah. Ab absolutely. And, and build and build new foundations and look for the successes, because uh, at the end of the day, to to bounce back and, and, and you know, move forward you know positively you have to have a solid foundation and hopefully this is part of building that solid foundation is being more intentional about the things that surround you absolutely and intentionality it's so important nowadays especially um with us you know character and integrity i say uh, are the currency of the day for me um mm -hmm. because especially in leadership roles, like uh, with my consulting aspect, I support leaders of nonprofits and faith-based organizations, whether I'm helping them calibrate their leadership or facilitate additional services to their communities. And this season was really when you, the, the human side of leadership came to surface or you saw the lack thereof. And with that, that forced me to really pay attention to that, that gap that I was seeing um, with a, maybe it was a lack of empathy or being truly understanding of how this pandemic really affected people or leaders or just the people they serve. And now I'm in the process of writing a work to help leaders, um, you know, um, double down in emotional recovery and using empathy laden terms, conversations, dialogues to kind of make sure that they are seen as, yes, a leader, someone who's bringing this organization or group to the next level, but as a human, someone who understands mm -hmm. and reflects that in their speech and the conversations they're bringing across. So yeah, intentionality and just being consistent with that has been, you know, the order of the day for me lately, even more so yeah. Yeah. with folks being I so emotionally drained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and, and a great place to end, I think, is just uh, underline that about be intentional on in what you do, because it, it, it'll actually, you'd be amazed the difference when you start to be intentional, as opposed to kind of being on autopilot or defaulting into things. Yeah, yeah, because that can lead to burnout. 
And that could mm-hmm. lead to resentment of what you're doing and asking yourself why all over again. So yeah. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> be intentional yeah. about it. Yeah, you'll learn to love it as long as you're intentional. Exactly. Figure out the why first and, uh, so that you're not later on going, why am I doing this? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been great. All of Coach Angie's information is going to be below this video so you can find out more. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. All right. Well, like I, uh, John said, I'm Angie Coach, uh, Coach Angie McDonald of Wounded to Wonderful Coaching. Also, of I am Consulting LLC. I'm a mom, wife, coach, friend, sister. Uh, but I, what I do most is I am ready to serve. I serve you in the areas of grief, resilience, and transitional coaching, positive talk, and uh, guiding you through those rough spots so that you too can heal, grow, discover, and of course, grow from wounded to wonderful. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, fantastic. Wounded to Wonderful. I love it. Again, like I said, all the information will be below the video. So I would encourage you to check it out. And if you're having a hard time or you just don't know how to put, you know, the next foot in front of the other, I mean, I really would encourage you to look at Coach Angie's work and think about, you know, what could a coach do for you? Because, I mean, you know, we spend so much money on coaches for everything else, but not for the part that puts bread on our table or maybe the part that's really, you know, dragging us down. True thing. And I'm here. I'm ready to serve. (laughs) <laughs> thank you all right uh, thanks everybody for watching and those who'll be listening as well and we will see you all for another interview really soon thank you mm-hmm.